<laughs> oh boy, Cassie. This magnetic putty you got me sure is fun. Well, I'm glad, because, you know, Christmas is about having fun with your presents. Isn't it about family and togetherness and stuff? Same thing. <laughs> You know, if there was a video game about this, it'd probably be great. Not terrible at all. You, you expecting somebody? You know, I mean, I'm not expecting anybody. You expect anybody? I, I, guess, I guess I'll go check it out. Oh, oh, you stupid bastard. Mm. What's in the box? Super putty. The stretchiest, bounciest, newspaper comic copy this game this side of the Mason-Dixon line. The game was originally released on the Amiga in 1992 and was ported over to the SNES a year later. You play as Putty, which is a living ball of putty. An evil wizard took over the moon you live on and kicked you off. Now you have to find a bunch of robots to build a skyscraper to get yourself back to the moon. Alright, you sold me. I'm in. Let's get you back to the moon, little buddy. Putty. Alright, first things first, look at his face. Something pretty amazing must be going on just outside the screen, because that is a look of astonishment. Oh no, I get it, I get it. He's just really into reading these high scores. Also, this box just shows off items with guild names. Yes, hi, uh, how do I become a member of the Distinguished Order of the Overripe Tomato? Is there a form? Do I gotta go online? Do I gotta do a secret handshake? Come on man, let me in. I'm hip. That's the cutest thing I've ever seen. Look at those guys! They're really going at it! Okay, time to actually start this thing. The point of the game is to bring these things from the bottom of the level to the top of the level. You do this by using your putty abilities, like stretch, jump, absorb, and punch. The basic skill set of any animated lump of clay. The game has three levels other than the training stage, so let's start at the beginning. First level, Putty Moon. We're on the moon, there's Spaceman as the boss. This is good, it's fitting, makes sense, I get it. And then we got Sweet Potato Face over here as a bonus. Bonus what? What does that even mean? This is not what I expected the moon to look like. I was thinking something along the lines of dark sky, white ground, cratery moon. Not this brick pillar, checkerboard, foresty moon. There is a lot of stuff going on right now. There's jumping mushroom dude, snail man, spider guy, fallen barrels, and fallen baby birds. Random assortment of enemies aside, I better start making my way to the top. All right, mushroom man, taste my putty fist. Okay, all right, I don't see anything too out of the ordinary here, you know, just a, just a blob of putty that punched a mushroom so hard, turned into a baby, okay. Seems like normal putty stuff to me. Also, you have to absorb the babies, for points. I guess it has a nice message. Save the babies, let them become a part of your blue blobish existence. Make sure not to miss any of them though, or else the main antagonist of the game, Dr. Wizard Meow Meow Kitty, will pop out of the screen and yell at you for your poor performance. Too bad, just missed it. <laughs> it's basically the equivalent of Bowser jumping out of a pipe and busting your balls every time Mario misses a Goomba. Anyhow, let's talk about gameplay. Damn it. Shit. <clears throat> God damn it. Barrels are falling from the sky, baby birds are used as hand grenades, sweet potato faces up my ass 24 7, dry in flies are doing drive by bomb droppings, and then you gotta deal with raid boss and machine gun carrot and. Oh my god! <laughs> But the boss of level one is this astronaut guy who dies in a single hit. You know, this game, this game, it's, it's, it's fun. This game's fun. Not, not terrible at all. I, I just want to eat my burgers. Level two is called Dazzle Days Villas. That sounds harmless enough. This might actually be a nice place where things aren't completely horrible. What the...
So let me take a second to break down what's going on here. Over here we have Fitness Conscious Sausage, who does nothing but laps all day. To my right we have this creepy green guy who continues to snipe me from the window. Up top we have what I can only describe as a horribly lost Taurus with no clue where to go. How did I get here? A naked witch who flies around. And lastly, a set of joke teeth that just sits at the top of the level, judging us all. Remember the flash day? Here we go, level two! What do I even do? There's one screen full of enemies that kill me but nowhere to go. I basically jump around until I die to something in some obscure way. I can't jump anywhere, there's not even a goal area anywhere on the screen, and there's no way up! To add insult to injury, this game controls like you are a ball of putty. This is great for immersion, but not for this blitzkrieg enemy onslaught. There are things flying at you from every direction 100% of the time, and when it feels like a ball of putty is stuck in your controller, you start to get frustrated. Really frustrated. Level 3. Techno Fear. <laughs> oh god! This level's called Techno Fear. I can only imagine what kind of horror is awaiting a level called Techno Fear. Everything else up at this point's been terrifying. What are the game designers gonna throw at me next? You know, this level actually looks a lot more mellow than the others have been so far. We've got some pigs on hippie hops, and even Sweet Potato Face cleaned up for the final level. He's got a suit and a top hat now, ready to make me angry in a much more sophisticated way. Whoa, 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 there's a box with a duck on it. What could that possibly mean? Should've known. Shut it out! I mean, what else are they gonna throw at me to make this game any stranger than it already is? Break it down! This level's different. It has its very own gimmick. The designers really went above and beyond here with the level design. Normally, you have to bring the little robots from the bottom of the level to the top. But here, ho ho ho, but here they really spice things up because you gotta bring the little robots from the top of the level to the bottom. It's brilliant, 10 out of 10. They got like perfect execution for this. There's nothing they could have done to make this any better. The thing that bothers me the most about this level is that you can't tell which enemies you can actually kill and which ones you have to just avoid with the extreme precision that you don't have as a result of this game being from the dark ages of controller technology. You waste all of your life trying to ruthlessly murder a light bulb, a seemingly fragile enemy, only to find out that they and 12 other types of random minions can't be injured in any way. Combine that with the fact that you have to traverse the entire level three times without dying, it's enough to drive me out of my little blue putty mine. You know what? I can't I can't take it anymore. I'm done with this game. I'm done with Putty Moon. I'm done with the fucking wizard cat. I'm out of here. A goodbye world. Your poorly designed entirety will not be missed. I can't believe I just went through that. That may have just single-handedly ruined my Christmas. Well, I got you something that might make you feel a little better. Oh, another present. Hey everybody! Man, I haven't made one of these in a while, am I right? Thanks for sticking around and watching my video. Be sure to click that like button and subscribe if you want to see more. If you want to watch the video I made on the Super Aquatic Games, click down there. See you next time.